Diplomat magazine is 77 years old, and this award ceremony is in its 14th year. Diplomat aims to champion you, London's diplomatic community. This is an award ceremony for diplomats, with the winners chosen by diplomats. This evening is about hard work and technique. It's about people and professionalism. Thank you to the judges who helped us agree on the winners. And we've had more nominations than ever before, thanks to our readers who sent those in. And thank you to our wonderful sponsors who make this ceremony possible. To the Royal Warrant Holding Cleve & Co for creating the beautiful awards, International Diplomatic Supplies for the Champagne and Wine, VFS Global, the world's largest visa outsourcing and technology specialist for governments and diplomatic missions worldwide, operating in 141 countries, and Cleveland Clinic London. Located round the corner on Grosvenor Place, Cleveland Clinic is part of a global health system that consistently ranks among the top hospitals in the world. First things first, the Peninsula London. Rolf Bullman is Managing Director, hosting us so generously this evening. May I invite Rolf to say a word of introduction? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Your Excellencies, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to the Peninsula London. We are delighted to see many of you here tonight. The Peninsula is still the new kid on the block in London, having soft opened only in September last year. While still early days, um, we were honored um, to have hosted a few national days and some other noteworthy society events. The ambition for all our 12 Peninsula hotels is to be situated in a prime city center location to deliver exceptional service and to become part of the local fabric. The diplomatic community is of course at the heart of this. We are delighted to host this prestigious event tonight to recognize the remarkable contributions you're, you're making to international cooperation, which I believe is needed more than ever. My heartfelt congratulations to you all. We look forward to welcoming many more of you at the Peninsula Hotel in the future, and thank you for turning out in such great numbers. Please enjoy the evening. Thank you. We have been through yet another challenging year. Global health, climate, and the security crisis in both Europe and the Middle East have dominated the agenda. These issues continue to highlight the essential role that diplomats play. Governments continue sending their best diplomats to the UK to navigate these major issues. As the Global Centre for Diplomacy, London is more important than ever. We're delighted to welcome back International Hospitals Group. Celebrating 52 years in 2024, International Hospitals Group is a fourth generation private family business founded in the UK. IHG has since become a truly international company, successfully completing over 480 healthcare projects in 55 countries. I'd like to welcome their group CEO to the stage, Chester King. Mr. Speaker, Your Excellencies, Lords, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is a great honour for International Hospitals Group to be a partner of the Diplomat Awards again, and I would very much like to thank Venetia and her team for organising this wonderful event tonight. As Venetia said, it's been an unprecedented 12 months again since the awards last year, with even more global healthcare challenges. We all have a duty of care, and over the last 12 months, IHG has hosted a number of breakfasts at the Royal College of Medicine with The Diplomat magazine, with two core focuses. One is on project finance, and we have a member of the UK Treasury team joining our breakfast, explaining how UK export finance can help support governments overseas in building new healthcare facilities or refurbing existing. We also... Sorry. 
We've also been focusing, as I mentioned last year, on mental health. I have a real passion about mental health, and it's something that we are really promoting within our company and whenever we meet with the governments. I'd like to highlight two key findings from the WHO Mental Health Report from 2022. First of all, mental health support for adolescents is essential, as 50% of those who develop mental health issues do so by the age of 14, and 75% by the age of 24. These are stats from the World Health Organization. And also, there is strong evidence that the investment made by governments into mental health services and facilities have a long-term impact in improving life expectancy, increased productivity, and would deliver a, a financial return of up to five times against the cost of future physical health care demands. Over the last year, we've met with the UN and a number of governments to discuss their needs and help with their mental health policies. International Hospital Group is a global healthcare services company that specializes in the development, design, and management of healthcare facilities. And we work with the governments and healthcare providers and investors to deliver innovative and sustainable healthcare solutions. As well as having companies in the UK, Romania, Ghana, and China, we'll be opening a new office in the Middle East later uh, this year. We are here to help and would like to invite you to the next breakfast that we've got on May the 9th, and Venetia probably can send details about that. And also, we'd like to say tonight to my IHD team who are over in the corner, we've got a small table with some brochures. We'd love to say hi and get to know you and talk about the experience that we're having across the world. I hope you have a great evening and congratulations to all those involved. Thank you very much. To business. Alas, the BBC has sent our colleague James Landale to Israel. But in his place, we are delighted to welcome the BBC's Adam Fleming. Of course, many of you have watched him on our television screens. Adam was previously the BBC's chief political correspondent, bringing news from Westminster to millions of viewers each day. He broke scoop after scoop about the Brexit negotiations as Brussels correspondent, when he also created the hit podcast, Brexit Cast. Today, Adam presents the UK's most listened to daily podcast, Newscast, and its spin-off TV show on BBC One. He also hosts Radio 4's weekly deep dive into the culture wars, Antisocial. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Adam Fleming. Um, yes. Um, I'm Adam, hello everyone. Uh, in my defense, I started a podcast before everyone else had one, so I uh, hope that's okay. Um, I am the poor man's James Landale, literally. He's about a thousand times posher than I am. Um, he was on Newscast on Friday, and he was talking about the latest and what was happening in Iran. He was in Jerusalem, and James is the only person that could segue from that seamlessly into an anecdote about what the Conservative Party chief whip in the Lords said to him at a party in 1999. That's, that's what a legend James is. And uh, I asked him, asked him about tonight. He said, you'll have a great time. The champagne will be delicious. The company will be great. The analysis will be fantastic. And you know what? Every single winner keeps their speech to under one minute. <laughs> the diplomatic correspondent. Right, uh, let's get going. Should we hand out some awards? Yes, right, so the first one is for Diplomat of the Year from Africa, and this is sponsored by our International Hospitals Group. They've got great hospitals. So Chester is gonna come back on the stage, and I'm pleased to say the winner of our first award, which is Diplomat of the Year from Africa, it's the High Commissioner of Kenya, Manoa Espesitu. <laughs> I want to thank you for thinking me worth of, worthy of this uh, award. I am going to cherish it. London has been special to me. Uh, but making our contribution on matters of international cooperation, international stability, is because you guys are also here and doing your bit. So I thank you very much. Right. Our second award um, is for Diplomat of the Year from Europe. The 2024 Diplomat of the Year from Europe is the Ambassador of Slovenia, Simona Leskovar. Today we live in a very, very dangerous and uh, fast-changing 
uh, global uh, society that uh, for diplomats, that is a quite challenging time. It's a lot of opportunities, but it's lost a lot of motivation, but it's also a lot of frustration out of that. And we all love to represent Slovenia, the only country in the world that has love in its name, so you cannot mix it with any other. <laughs> so, the winner of our third award, which is the Diplomat of the Year from Asia and Oceania, uh, has worked in the Commonwealth, the Women in Diplomacy Network, uh, their High Commissioner, they're passionate and visible across all their networks and regions of the world. They've been described as a force of nature, praised for their leadership, their personality, and their sense of humor. They've already won at these awards in the climate category before, but they're gonna get another one this year because the 2024 Diplomat of the Year from Asia and Oceania is the High Commissioner of Bangladesh, Muna Tazneem. It has been a great year, 2023, and I think this award really inspires all the diplomats working in London, which is, we consider, the center of the world. So I want to thank my team, who's very much here, and also want to thank the Foreign Office and the Mr. Speaker. Such a great honor to receive this award from you. I would end with a, you know, with a famous quote from Denzel Washington, my most favorite, you know, most favorite African-American actor. He said when he didn't receive the Oscar, but he was nominated, that, you know, men gives award and God gives rewards. But I think men giving award is very good. Thank you. Right, okay, our fifth award, we're nearly halfway through now, is the Diplomat of the Year from Eurasia and the Western Balkans. The 2024 Diplomat of the Year from Eurasia and the Western Balkans is the Ambassador of Turkey, His Excellency Osman Kori Ertash. When you look from outside, our profession looks quite glamorous and sometimes uh, secretive, if I may say. It has always been like this, obviously. Uh, people are seeing us in cocktails and receptions and in the London setting, in Royal Ascot, for example, or in, in, in the palace. Uh, but we are the ones who actually, as uh, career diplomats, uh, who know well the challenges um, right, our sixth award is for Diplomat of the Year from North America and the Caribbean. Uh, the 2024 Diplomat of the Year from North America and the Caribbean is the Ambassador of Mexico, Her Excellency Josefa Gonzalez Blanca. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's wonderful to see so many beautiful, friendly faces. And this is what I hope for the world. When we see each other and we love each other the way we do in sisterhood, in parenthood, uh, that's, that's what I wish for, for the countries to do the same. What we're doing today, and thanks to Diplomat Magazine, amazing work, bringing us together. We talk, we do our work, we exceed, we, we make bonds, we visit each other, we eat each other's food, we dance each other's music, and then we become one, and then peace can happen. We are closer to peace than ever. Uh, right, our seventh award is for Diplomat of the Year from Central and South America. And to present the award, prestigiously I might say, is Marshal of the Diplomatic Corps, Alastair Harrison. Uh, yes, so the 2024 Diplomat of the Year from Central and South America is the Ambassador of Costa Rica, His Excellency Rafael Ortiz Fabrega. Congratulations. We 
we come from a family that has served our country. Actually, more than 100 years ago, a great grandfather was also here representing our country. And um, we, we are a, a small country in size, only 52,000 kilometers, 5 million people, but a country with high ideals. We decided 75 years ago to abolish our army and search and continue our process of development through peace, abiding by the international rule of law, solving our conflicts through those institutions, and definitely being blessed with one of the best neighborhoods in our planet, conserving our biodiversity, being leaders in climate change, having the privilege of just about 100% of our grid being from renewable energy, and uh, opening up our economy many years ago, having most of the most, uh, the most important uh, um, companies in the world established in Costa Rica. We are now the second exporter of sophisticated medical devices, and um, we export to 165 countries. And through that, people know Costa Rica maybe because of our coffee. It's very important, but it's, the UK is now becoming the leading country of tourism from Europe to Costa Rica. So I hope all of you have a chance, if you haven't been there, to, to go there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right, our eighth award is for Outstanding Contribution to Climate Diplomacy. The winner of the 2024 Outstanding Contribution to Climate Diplomacy is the High Commissioner of Mauritius, His Excellency Girish Nunker. So our ninth award, the penultimate one, is for Young Diplomat of the Year, and it's sponsored by International Hospitals Group. So please welcome back Chester to the stage. Thanks, Chester. The winner of the 2023 Young Diplomat of the Year is the Vice President of the Young Diplomats in London and his second secretary at the Embassy of Montenegro. It's Perko Mijatovic. <laughs> I would like to say I'm truly honored and humbled to receive this award and I would like to thank to all my esteemed colleagues and judges who voted for me. As diplomat's job is to serve its country, I, uh, I find this award not only as a personal achievement but also as a recognition to my country of Montenegro and to my embassy as well. I extend my appreciation to Diplomat Magazine and Venetia for providing this amazing opportunity. My special gratitude goes to Ms. Natasha Jovic, Chargé d'Affaires of uh, Embassy of Montenegro and my boss as well, for her unreserved support and guidance. Also, I would like to mention Young Diplomats in London organization, which continues to be an amazing framework for connecting young diplomats and invite all the young diplomats to join if they haven't still. Last but not least, I would like to thank Milica Boris Sandana for being here tonight with me. Thank you. Right, it's our final awards. The 2024 Outstanding Contribution to Diplomacy in London goes to His Excellency, the Ambassador of the European Union, Pedro Serrano. And Diplomat Magazine, we have a diplomatic core here, but I think Diplomat Magazine helps us get closer together and build a diplomatic community, and that is very important. I think some of the persons that preceded me here today were mentioning the importance of us talking and getting together, and it's true that uh, we do a lot of diplomacy beyond relations with the UK and just by building further bonds between the countries that are represented here today. And I feel very, not only comfortable, but very honored and proud to 
have been um, awarded this, uh, this uh, prize together with a group of very distinguished uh, diplomats that have preceded me here. If I have to think of one reason why maybe I have been selected, I want to think that it is because uh, 2023 was a very significant year for EU-UK relations and definitely the Windsor framework uh, has, has contributed to that. We strengthened further our relationship and this strengthening is essential for the security, prosperity of Europe but also so that Europe can engage even better in addressing security and prosperity in the rest of the world. Uh, so many thanks uh, to all the colleagues also that support me in this task. Many thanks to the European Union. It uh, is, is not only, of course, the ambassador of the European Union here, it's the only 27 brilliant ambassadors of member states. And uh, I want to thank them for the support and their encouragement in our work. And I want to support, thank as well, obviously, all the colleagues in Europe with whom we work very closely and beyond Europe because here we have a, a large number of true partners of the European Union and it's a privilege to work with all of you. So final thanks to my great team uh, and, uh, and big thanks again to all of you for this award. Thank you.